Neophyte bite. <laughs> <laughs> So if you guys remember, in episode one, we traveled all the way to Lincolnville, Maine to meet up with the master boat builder, Walter J. Simmons, the man who drew up the plans for the Newfoundland trap skiff, the boat we're both building. Not only did we want to learn about where our boat came from, but we wanted to experience some of the boat building culture in the area and maybe even talk to some other builders. So Walter suggested we go check out the apprentice shop in Rockland, Maine. The apprentice shop is a small but well-known traditional boat building school in Rockland, Maine. It was founded in the early 70s by boat builder and educator Lance Lee. Apprentices at the apprentice shop sign on for a two year long program. In the first year, they all build the same boat, a Susan skiff, with a lot of the starting materials provided for them by the apprentice shop. But in the second year, they take on a more ambitious project where they have to start from square one with only a set of boat plans to guide them. So after leaving Walter in Lincolnville, we headed to Rockland, Maine to visit the apprentice shop. We were extremely fortunate to be able to talk to two different boat builders, an instructor, Daniel Kreischer, and an apprentice, Maria Alexia. So this was really one of the first times Murphy and I had done any filming, and you'll notice that a lot of the audio and video aren't great, but we felt like it was a really unique opportunity to learn about the historic restoration that both Daniel and Maria Alexia were working on, as well as their own personal journeys through wooden boat building. So let's meet Daniel and Maria. My name is Daniel Kreischer. Um, I'm from New Bedford originally, in Massachusetts. I came to the apprentice shop as an apprentice about eight years ago to learn boat building and sailing and seamanship for the sake of being able to use that as a platform for education. Graduated from the two-year program and went off and uh, spent quite a bit of time working in restoration of like larger, older, uh, American glass boats and then about two years ago uh, two and a half years ago um, I came back to the apprentice shop because they needed uh, another instructor so it all kind of came full circle in a way I'm currently working on uh, it's technically a restoration project although 99% of it's going to be new it's a Dublin Bay 24 She's 38 feet on deck, 24 on the waterline, um, like a hair over 8 feet. They were originally called the Royal Alfred 38. Um, they were a series of boats that were built and designed by Milne for the Royal Alfred Yacht Club in Ireland. There are nine of them in existence. Some of them were built before World War II. Um, and those that had been built before World War II were hidden on, on an island off the northern coast of Scotland, to, or Ireland, I mean, um, to keep the lead from getting cut up for uh, ballistics um, and munitions. One has already been rebuilt by an affiliated school named Scola More in France, in Brittany, that area. And we're building the second one now. Francois Vivier, who's on the board of directors for Scola More, uh, he's also a naval architect and he's done some really beautiful designs. He actually, um, as Scullamore was rebuilding the boat, he took all the lines off of it, so we have some pretty good drawings of the boat. We're almost done with planking. We have one more broad strake on the starboard side, and then the shear strakes on both the port and starboard side. We're about a year into the project, a little over a year at this point, and shooting to be done within the next year and a half. So far, yes. So far, yes. Yeah. We're, we'll be putting the original ballast on the boat and um, there'll be some hardware off of the original boat and some other miscellaneous things, but not very much. Maria Alexia is, she's the uh, project leader. Um, she's the human being who's, who's running the show. Got it. And I'm in the background for reference. Oh gosh. Um, well, they're not. There's absolutely nothing about a handmade wooden boat that is important. To me, the importance of the building of a wooden boat is uh, in the building of the character and, and the 
person. You can wane on for hours romantically, and and they're beautiful and wonderful, and there's so much about them that's the life. Of, at least my intention in being here is not necessarily because it's. I mean, I love wooden boats, but it's not out of just the pure love for wooden boats. It's the skill set and the experience and the group dynamic that has to happen and the ability to work with other people. And I feel like it gives people a really good sense of confidence and sense of self, a um, sense of joy and pride in their own craftsmanship. So that's what is important about it to me. I am from Greece. I came to the United States uh, to study industrial design at the Rhode Island School of Design, thinking I would end up maybe being either an architect, or industrial designer, um, although I always low-key just wanted to be a sculptor. When I kind of entered that world of industrial design, I was a little bit appalled by just the nature of the industry. There is a lot of waste. Anything that you would design would probably end up in a landfill in um, a couple years. And that was incredibly unappealing to me. Boat building, I came across it because one of my instructors was the chair at the board of directors here at the apprentice shop. And I was kind of introduced to this place and suddenly I, A, I fell in love with with Maine and B, it just, it was something that made sense. It was, um, you know, creating both objects and spaces um, that will hopefully outlive all of us. So it kind of brought all of those issues that I had um, or resolved all of those issues that I was having with my, um, my department, my degree. Um, so I decided to move up here. My first project, which funnily enough, at the time was the biggest thing I had ever worked on was the Susan's gift that every apprentice builds um, and now it working on this 38 foot boat seems like a baby I, I went through a really kind of a really cool and um, gradual evolution from the Susan's gift to then building um, a 15 foot white hall to now graduating to this project this whole concept of project leader is kind of new to the shop. Um, it's not something that we typically, or is typically done just because we don't really have big projects like this. Part of, you know, building a boat like, is ordering the lumber, dealing with the fasteners, just like all of the logistical stuff that is typically taken care of by- That's put on you. Well, now it's, it's put on me partially. Like I, I obviously get support because I would have no idea how to estimate I don't know how much lumber to get for planking, but being able to be part of that process is really, I don't know, I think it's it's really cool. And it's a whole nother skill set. I went from building my Susan skiff by myself to working on the White Hall with another person and like graduating to a like a five person crew. So the level of like communication got upped every time. I think the hardest part of it is managing a crew because you need to you need to set expectations, set goals, but also like I don't know, half the people working on this boat are older than me, so it's like a weird dynamic. I'd imagine that boat builders are often not the best communicators. <laughs> no, well, because well, you Such can a get... solitary exactly, practice. Exactly, you yeah. can get so caught up into whatever you're doing, and then it it's you can get so isolated from your crew, and we've experienced, we've, that's happened, where I'm working on a section of the plank, Rick is literally next to me working on a section, the, the section next to my plank, right. and suddenly, like, Two days in, there will be like a total miscommunication on like something, and we're like, "How did we miss this?" Like we were working next to each other, uh -huh. but you're just so in the zone. Right. Wow. So wooden boats are a big. There's a long-standing tradition in Greek culture that, um, funnily enough, I've come to only start discovering. I have a really deep connection with the sea. I grew up basically on the water, um, but not sailing or anything like that. And suddenly coming here and learning how to sail and finding this kind of, discovering this, this vessel, um, it's just now anytime I go back home, I just, I notice things differently. It's giving me a whole new skill set of 
just exploring my country, um, which is something that I never even expected or was hoping to get out of coming here. That's what's more, the more deeply personal side of it. And there's also kind of what I mentioned earlier, um, being able to create this vessel that is, it's a space and it creates these amazing experiences. Um, and being able to, to be a part of that, even just you know, putting one plank on, you're still kind of, you're putting your mark on this, I don't know, this thing that will hopefully give joy to a lot of people, so. We both really hope you enjoyed meeting Daniel and Maria and learning about the apprentice shop in Rockland, Maine. If you guys are enjoying the project and the series, make sure to like and subscribe below and consider becoming a patron on Patreon. Everything you guys can give really helps. We've got a lot of materials to buy, and it takes a lot of time, money, and effort to put this project together. We can only do it with your support. And so on that note, we have four new patrons. Much thanks to Eric Osborne, Bart Vanderwerf, Paul Schriever, and Paul Johnson. Thanks! thanks. Bye! Bye. <laughs>